Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and today I'm super excited to bring you an updated version of our WMX stack. If you're not sure what that is, that's okay. We kind of made it up. It's essentially a way that you can use Webflow, Member Stack, and Xano all together. What we're going to cover in this video is Member Stack version 1 and version 2. We're going to talk about the setup in Webflow. We're going to look at the Xano APIs. We're going to look at how you can install the snippet and use it for yourself. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about migrating existing member stack members into your new setup. Now, depending on the version of member stack that you're using, you can use the timestamps in the description below to skip right to the portion of the video that you need. So here I am in member stack version one. For this example, I have two plans set up. I have a free plan and a paid plan. In my forms and fields section, I do have a couple of custom fields defined. We have first name, last name, and Webflow CMS ID. Now the CMS ID is something that we are going to hide from the profile. This isn't something that the user needs to see, but it is something that we need to keep track of the integration. Also over here under power ups and integrations, we can go and take a look at our webhooks. We do have a webhook set up that calls one of our Xano APIs when a new member is added. And that's pretty much all we need to do on the member stack side to make this example work. So let's go over to Webflow and take a quick look at how we have our site set up. So if we go over here to our home page, you can see we have two buttons. We have a free membership and a paid membership. On the free membership button, if we go to the settings, you can see we have this value in our URL here. We get that from member stack on our memberships page right over here with the sign up link option. So if we click on this, you can see we get a link that we can copy and paste right into Webflow. And we did the same thing for the paid membership button as well. Once the user has signed up or logged in for this example, we have a page that displays certain products that are only available to that user based on the plan that they've chosen. That data is being displayed via some custom code. We're using the Xano JavaScript SDK to take this data from Xano and display it in Webflow. We're also at the same time trading the login token that member stack stores with a Xano auth token so this user can make requests against authenticated Xano endpoints. All of this will be available down in the description so you can take a look at the example for yourself. Now let's hop over to Xano and take a look at what's happening for member stack version one. So in Xano, we have a few endpoints depending on the version of member stack that you're using. For this example, the first endpoint we'll take a look at is this new member API. And this is the API that member stack is calling anytime a new member is created. So this endpoint has five steps. The first step is to just get the data that member stack is sending. We collect all of that data and we store it in a variable so we can continue to use it in the rest of the function stack. We are then making an API request to Webflow. We are calling Webflow and we're saying, hey, we have a new member. We need you to add this to the Webflow CMS. And we can see here in Webflow, we have a members CMS collection with the first name, last name, and an email field. So we call the Webflow API, we make that connection, and we add that member to our Webflow CMS. Once we've added that Webflow member to our CMS, in that response that Webflow gives back has the ID of that member from the Webflow CMS. So we can then take that ID and we can call a member stack API to update that member with the ID from Webflow's CMS. We need to make sure that we record all of these values so we can keep the data in sync between all three platforms. The next step is to call our plans table. So in Xano, we have a database table that is specifically dedicated to keeping track of the different plans that we have in member stack. So once we have that record ID, we can finally add that user to our Xano database using data from the API requests, as well as from the get record in the previous step. The end result of this is when we create a member in member stack, it is populated in our Webflow CMS and our Xano database. The next API that we're going to take a look at is called items of member. This API endpoint is very simple. All this does is it gets the record of the user that is sending the request to this API, and it is returning the items that they have available to them 
based on their subscription. The last API that we're going to talk about for MemberStack version one is the trade token endpoint. So when you're using MemberStack, MemberStack is handling all of the user authentication, but we still need a way for those users to make authenticated requests against your Xano endpoints. So we do that by taking the member stack token and we are trading that token for a Xano auth token, which is then returned and stored locally for the user so they can continue to utilize the platform. So for this function, we have one input, which is the token that member stack has stored on the client side. That token is being sent to Xano via the custom code that we have embedded in our page. We then use a JWS decode function to actually decode that token. Once we've decoded that token, that token actually includes the user ID. So we can use a get record function on the user table to get that user's record. We have a precondition just to make sure that that user actually exists. If for some reason that user is not in your Xano database, then we return a user not found error. But if the user does exist, we then create a variable called when to expire. So the goal for this is to make sure that your Xano authentication tokens and your member stack authentication tokens both expire at the same time. So to do that, we take the expiration out of the token that's returned from member stack. We multiply that by a thousand because that token is actually returned in seconds, but we need milliseconds for this. So we multiply it by a thousand. We subtract the current timestamp, so whatever the date and time is right now in milliseconds. We subtract that and then divide it by a thousand to get the seconds back. And then finally, we apply a ceiling filter just to round it up to the nearest second. And then finally, we use a create authentication token function using the when to expire variable and the ID that was returned from our get record step. And we return that new Xano auth token back to the user, which is again stored locally so the user can continue to make those requests. So I know we went through a lot there. And again, this is all available as a snippet so you can import this logic directly into your workspace. But let's just take a look at it in action. So I'm gonna go over to Webflow. I'm gonna to go to my homepage and I'm going to open the published site in an incognito tab. So we're going to click on paid membership and we'll go ahead and fill in our details. And we'll click sign up. We're in test mode, so we just provide a test credit card number and confirm. So we've now signed up to our website. And if we go over to the dashboard page, we can see that we are presented with the products that are labeled for paid users. So let's hop over to Xano and let's take a look at exactly what happened on the back end. So here we are in our new member API. And if we look at the request history, we can see we have a request, so that means that member stack has sent us some information about the new member. We can expand the input and we can see exactly what member stack has sent. So we have the member ID and we have the first name and the last name as well as the email. In the second step of the function, we've taken that ID, the first name and the last name, as well as the email and populated that member in our Webflow CMS via an API request. So we can see in Webflow, if we go to our CMS, there is our new member. We then called the member stack API to take that ID that Webflow returned of that new CMS item and attach it to that member. So we can check that by looking at our member list here in member stack. And we can see that we have a Webflow CMS ID populated here. We then looked up the members plan from our plans table and added that member to the Xano database. So we can go over to our Xano database and we can see our user is now populated in our Xano table with the Webflow ID and the member stack ID. And this then enabled us to make a request to this items of member API endpoint. We can see in the request header that Xano auth token was provided and we were given the products that are attached to our subscription. So now we're going to talk about member stack version two. So what's different between setting this up for member stack version one versus version two? Well, let's take a look at member stack first. So here we are in our member stack version two uh, workspace. We're going to go to our plans. So we have a free plan and then we have a paid plan. Now the way you set up the paid plans are a little bit different. We have a paid plan, but we also need to make sure to set up a specific price. And that price is going to correspond with a plan in our Xano database. 
Over on the members side, we can click custom fields and you can see we have that first name, last name, and Webflow CMS ID applied here. The webhooks are populated in the dev tools section. Now for the webhooks on V2, we actually need two webhooks to start. We have a new member webhook and we also have an update plan webhook. So the webhook for new member is triggered when a new member is added. And then the update plan webhook is triggered when a user selects a plan. The flow for how user signup works in member stack version two is a little bit different in that the user is signed up for an account first and then they pick a plan. So that means that the member is created and they have no plan attached to them at all. So we need to handle that a little bit differently on the Xano side. So let's go over to our version two APIs and we can take a look at that in our new member API for version two. So step-by-step, step, this is pretty similar. What changes is the way we handle the plan. So steps one through three are largely the same. The structure for what member stack returns is a little bit different. So that means that when we populate the member in Webflow, our targets for how we populate these fields are just a little bit different. Same with the API request that we make to member stack. We're actually calling a different endpoint here and applying our custom fields. And then we still have this get record from plans table. And the reason why I included this was so we could account for the potentiality of a user picking a plan before the member is created. However, if there is no plan provided from when we populate that member in member stack, then we just default to our free plan by specifying the free plan ID here. We then add the member to our Xano database. So that takes care of the user signing up, but what happens after they sign up and then they choose a plan? Well, that is the second webhook that we're calling, which is called new member update plan V2. And so for this endpoint, what we're doing is we get all the input that member stack sends. And from that input, we can get the user ID from Xano by looking at the member stack member ID and looking that up in our user table. We then have a precondition just to make sure that that user actually exists in Xano. If that user does exist, then we're basically doing the same thing that we were doing in version one. We are using the ID that member stack provides to look up that plan. And then we edit the user record to actually attach that plan to the user in our Xano database. We also have a different trade token API for version two. And this is really just because we have different public keys for member stack version one and version two. So. The function itself is the same. The only thing that changes is the key that we provide in this JWS decode function. Let's go ahead and preview our version two site and we can show this to you in action. So I'm gonna choose a paid membership. Go ahead and fill in my details here. We're then redirected to our test payment page. And once we click pay, the membership plan is attached to our account and that Xano API is called to update our member in the Xano database with the new plan. We are then redirected to our dashboard and we can see the products that are attached to paid user subscriptions. And we can see on the back end, if we go over to Xano and we go back to our database, we have that paid user for V2 added here and we can go into our CMS in Webflow and we have ourselves as a user right here. We're really excited to give you the building blocks to make this integration happen, but I'm not gonna leave you without showing you how to actually implement this yourself with the snippet. So let's take a look at how to do that. So I'm on the snippet page. I'm gonna go ahead and click add to my Xano account. I'm going to choose my instance and click add to instance down at the bottom. I can then click this button to go straight to my instance. And now that I'm in my instance, I'm gonna go over here to the marketplace tab on the left-hand side. I'm gonna click purchased. And then I can click WMX stack and I'm going to click install snippet and then the install button down in the corner. So we've now installed this snippet into our Xano workspace. And this snippet includes all of the API endpoints that we mentioned earlier. This also includes the three database tables and some custom functions that help make those APIs run. So if I'm brand new to installing the snippet, the first thing I'm going to need to do is add my plans. So we're going to go ahead and add plans for member stack V1. So for version one, we're going to look at the signup link for our free plan. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to copy this value that is at the end. And we're gonna go ahead and add that to our database. For version one of member stack, the price ID does not need to be populated. 
So let's go ahead and add our paid plan. Okay, so we've added our plans. Now let's go ahead and add a couple of sample items. And these are both going to be available for our free plans. And we'll go ahead and add an item three and four for our paid plan. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go into our settings and we're going to need to populate some of these environment variables here. These variables are values that our functions are going to use so they can execute properly. So we'll go to manage. And the first thing we need to do is get our Webflow API key. So to do that, we're going to go over to Webflow. We're going to go to our project settings. We'll go to the integrations tab and we'll scroll all the way down. And we have this button here that says generate new API token. We're going to go ahead and click that and we'll copy it. And we will paste that into our Webflow API key. And now we need the CMS ID. So assuming you've created the CMS collection in Webflow already, we just need to get the ID from that. So again, we'll go back to Webflow and we'll head over to the designer. We'll go over to our CMS and we'll go to the settings and we have that collection ID right there. So we'll go ahead and copy that and paste it into our CMS ID. And now we need a member stack API key. And now we need a member stack API key. So we get that in member stack going over to our settings. We'll go to developers and we will click this new API key button right here. And we'll just call this WMX test and we'll create that. And then we have our key here that we can copy and paste right into Xano. And after we've done that, we can click save. We're then going to want to go into our API and we're going to find this new member API endpoint. And we're going to click this little button here to copy the endpoint link. And then back in member stack, we're going to go to our power ups, integrations, and we'll go down to webhooks. And we are going to create a new webhook. We'll paste that endpoint URL right there and make sure new member is selected and then save the webhook. So now every time a new member is created, member stack is going to call our API. For the custom code in Webflow, which again, the example that we're using will be available down in the description below. We're using the Xano JavaScript SDK for this, so it makes it pretty simple. We're gonna go into the project settings for our Webflow project. We'll go over to the custom code tab. You will need to install the custom code provided by member stack for this, which is available from the install code section under your settings. But we're also going to want to actually call the Xano JavaScript SDK as well as define a new Xano client using our API group base URL. We get that in Xano by going to our APIs. We'll go to our WMX group and we're going to copy this base URL and we are going to paste it right here. You want to make sure that you add the proper links that you get from member stack. Again, that's just in our memberships section. We have our signup links over here on the right hand side. You want to make sure to populate your sign up buttons with those based on the membership. In the custom code for the page that the user is redirected to when they log in, let's take a look at what this JavaScript is doing. The first thing we're doing is we are getting the member stack token. Now with member stack v1, there is an embedded function for this. It's just member stack dot get token. That's all we need to do there. And then we are calling the Xano trade token API and providing that token that we get from member stack. And all we're doing is we're just sending that token to the Xano API and the Xano API is then responding with the Xano auth token. And once we have that, we can then call the items of member endpoint. And for this endpoint, we need to process the result that's returned to actually populate the div elements on our page. So we do that by looking for a container. The container just has a class of item container. And inside that container, we populate div element with the item name and the item description. If I had maybe a third field in here, let's say it was a price, I would just want to change this description to say price instead. You just wanna make sure that it matches up with what your Xano API is returning in the response. So my API returns name, description, and price. So that is what I have in my custom code. If you receive any errors when testing your page, 
We do also have code embedded here to log those errors to the browser console. So you can take a look at those and they should give you an idea of where to look. We'll go ahead and save our custom code and we'll publish. And let's go ahead and sign up for our website. So we will go ahead and say test user and give a password and click sign up. Go ahead and confirm our paid subscription. And now let's go back into Xano and let's look at our user table. There is our test user. Let's go over to Webflow and check our CMS. There is our test user. And if we head to the dashboard, we can see our paid products. And that's pretty much the entire process for setting up the snippet. Now, if you're using MemberStack version two, there are a couple of things that are different here, mainly the environment variables. So for version two, you're going to want to instead populate the MemberStack version two API key the Webflow CMS ID version two and the Webflow API key version two. So where do we get those? The Webflow API key and the CMS are the same. So let's go over to our Webflow version two site and we'll go ahead and get those keys. Let's get our CMS ID first. So there's our CMS ID and let's get our API key again by going to our project settings over to the integrations tab and we will generate an API token and paste that right there. And now we need our member stack version two API key for version two. We get that from the dev tools section and you're going to want this secret key and paste that right into Xano. So now that we have our keys populated for V2, let's go back into our database and we need to talk about how to populate the plans. So we'll go over to our plans section and we have our free plan ID right here. And we're going to paste this in both the member stack ID field and the price ID field. For our paid plan, we're going to get the plan ID. And then we're also going to go back to our price. And we're going to get the price ID and paste that in the appropriate field. And so now we've added our V2 plans to our Xano database. And now we can go into Webflow and take a look at our custom code. So we again have the MemberStack Webflow package. That is the code that you get from MemberStack. The next thing to do is to populate the webhooks in MemberStack. So we're going to go over to our API in Xano. Let's get the endpoint URL for our new member V2 API. And in member stack, we'll click add endpoint, go ahead and paste the URL here. And we are going to check this member created box in the filter events section and click create. We're also going to want to add a second endpoint, and this is going to be the new member update plan API. So let's copy that link, paste it in the URL box, and we are going to check the member plan added and member plan updated boxes and click create. So we've populated our plans in Xano. We've added the webhooks to member stack. Now let's go over to Webflow and take a look at our custom code. So again, we are utilizing the Xano JavaScript SDK. We have the custom code that member stack gives us and we define a new Xano client. Let's get our API group base URL. Go ahead and copy that and paste it right there and go ahead and save our changes. And now let's go to the designer. For the buttons on our homepage to actually direct the user to the proper sign up form, we have custom attributes defined that we get from member stack with the plan and price IDs in them. And they just redirect to our sign up page. Once our user signs up, we redirect them to the dashboard page. And on the dashboard page, we can take a look at this custom code. It is pretty similar, but we need to get the member stack token in a different way. And we're doing that by reading the cookies of the user and we are pulling the member stack ID out of there. But after that, it's pretty much the same. We're calling a trade token V2 API and sending that token. And we are then calling the items of member endpoint using that Xano authentication token. The HTML for this to actually populate your item container is exactly the same as V1. Again, we have our name and description here, but if you have additional fields, you can populate them in this section. You also, of course, want to make sure that in your Xano database, you have items populated for your V2 plans.
Now, the last thing I want to show you today is a couple more APIs that we have available in this snippet. And these are API endpoints for migration. So let's say you're already using MemberStack, but now you want to integrate Xano. How do you get your members that already exist from MemberStack to Xano? Well, we've made that super easy with a couple of API endpoints. We have separate APIs for V1 and V2, depending on which version of MemberStack you're using. All you have to do is upload the CSV of the members export that MemberStack gives you. To get that, we're gonna go over to MemberStack. So in V1, if we go to our members section, we have an export button up here in the upper right-hand corner, and they email you an export in a CSV format. For MemberStack version two, if we go to members and we click the three dots in the upper right-hand corner, we have an export members CSV, and MemberStack sends that to our email. We can take a look at this function just to kind of run you through what it's doing, but this is very similar to our standard CSV import snippet. We take the CSV data, we pull the headers out, and we pull out each row, and we loop against those rows to populate our table. The biggest difference here is we have an extra step in our loop that gets the record from the plans table that belongs to that user. And we do that before we add the user record so we can actually populate that in that user's record in our Xano database. The reason that we have different endpoints for version one and version two is because essentially the way that that plan is stored is a little bit different. So for V2, we use the price ID to actually get that plan. If the price ID does not exist, so that means the user is not on a paid plan, they're on a free plan, then we use the plan ID. And that's pretty much it. That is a demonstration of the WMX stack and the snippet that we've provided for you. Again, that's available down in the description below. You don't have to build any of this yourself. You can just import it right into your Xano workspace, add your environment variables, your items, and your plans. And once you've implemented the custom code in your Webflow site, you're good to go. Please let us know if you have any questions. You can leave those down in the comments below. You can reach out to us via support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.